Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello, it's great to see you all again. Hi, Art. Hi, Bill. How are Hi, you? Hi, guys. I'm great. This Thanks is, for having me back. This is a, always a pleasure to have you back, Bill. Mm -hmm. uh, I was looking through your uh, 15 practices online. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and you can have, explain what those are. But I came across number four. I always look here and there. But today, number four struck me. Today is, number four is live for today, right? Stay yeah, in the stay, present. Stay in the present, exactly. Ex so Explain to people what, what your 15 practices are. Yeah, okay. Well, in October of 2019, I launched this movement called Embrace the Boom, and it's uh, a way I, I hopefully will um, empower and inspire and encourage members of the baby boomer generation, of which I belong. If you were born between 1946 and 1964, you are a baby boomer. You were raised by, born to and raised by members of our greatest generation. So it's 15 practices. I love quotes and stuff, and I've kind of adopted uh, getting into a little bit of philosophy, even some ancient stuff that really is pretty timeless. And 15 practices that when I live by them as best I can or am mindful of them, I tend to have a, a better life, less drama, less hassle, more enjoyment, more fulfillment, a more positive life. Number four of those, and by the way, there's 15, different ones may hit you at different times. You know, some days I really need the reminder of calm is contagious, which is number 10. Some days I need number one, which is attitude of gratitude. Uh, you know, we need that every day. I believe we should start our every day with attitude of gratitude. But stay in the present because I think it was the old philosopher Lao Tzu from Asia. Lao Tzu, I think, said that, you know, if you are if you are anxious, then you are focused on the future. If you are depressed, you are thinking about the past. You need to stay in the present. And while we may want to plan for the future, you can only plan for the future today. We can't worry about it so much. You can't go back and play the past, but so much and all the regrets you've got. I, I quite un understand. I don't understand people who very probably will tell you, I don't have any regrets. Well, man, I've got a million regrets of ways that I've handled things or things I've said or done that I shouldn't have done or could have done better. I've got a million regrets, but it doesn't do me any good to go back and replay them other than to learn from them and try to be better moving forward. I do have a a little bit of a parable that that may help you with this. And we've found this to be the case in our own lives when something happens and we start to worry about what's going to happen because X happened, that means Y is going to happen. The parable goes, back in the old days, this farmer worked his land with his son and one horse. And one night the horse broke out of the corral, ran away. And the townsfolk all came to the farmer and said, oh, this is so horrible. You've lost your only horse, and now it's only just you and your son to work the land. And well, this is such bad news for you. And the old, far old farmer wisely said, could be bad, could be good. The next night, the horse came back into the corral and led 20 other horses into the corral with him. And the next day, the townspeople came to him and said, this is fantastic. Now you have 21 horses with which to, to work your land with your son. How fortunate you are. And the farmer said, could be good, could be bad. The next day, the son goes out to break one of the horses to tame it. The horse throws him. The son breaks his leg. The townspeople come and say, this is horrible. Your only son to work the land and he's broken his leg. And now what will you do? And the farmer says, could be bad, could be good. The next week, the army comes through, conscripting young men of fighting age, military age, and they don't take him because he's got a broken leg. Could be good, could be bad. So we don't know until things play out what's good or bad. So uh, to your point, if that makes sense to you, we don't know because of what happens today is going to lead to something bad. Right. People worry about when a company gets bought, that a new owner, that things are going to be bad. That's not always bad. We tend to think that change is bad, and change many times can be good. Well, I liked it because it made me, what I got out of it on this particular reading was you've got to stay in the present and you've got to deal with the present. Yeah, you've got to, exactly. This is what you've got. Make the best of it you can. That, that's what I took and away. It's, and on and this it's really the only thing. It's really the only thing that uh, you can control. You can plan for the future, put some money away for retirement right. or rainy day for repairs, whatever. But the only thing that you can absolutely have control of is in the present and how you react to 
a given situation. Yeah, the reaction is the only control uh, is the only control you have. And and uh, as I've adopted this philosophy of stoicism, which I highly recommend, this the Daily Stoic by Ryan Holiday is a daily reading, sort of a meditative, uh, devotional kind of thing I do every morning. Um, that staying in the present and that the 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 founding found the founding thought behind stoicism is recognizing what we can change and what we cannot. Right. You know, accept the things I cannot change, you know, the courage to mm-hmm. change the things I can, the wisdom to know the difference. That's the biggest hang up that people have. We try sure. to change stuff or change somebody else. So the best thing to do is just stay here. If there's something going on, and this is what I'm working on in regards to that, I've, I've read another article from a guy. It's like you detach, you kind of step back, sort of, you know, figuratively speaking, step back from the situation, take a breath, pause, because there's power in the pause, and then make a call, make a decision. Mm-hmm. And if you didn't make a good decision, step back, pause, make another decision. That's what life is. We're just decisions all day long, yeah. you know? So we just, we just, we have to adjust as we go along. You know, uh, you mentioned stoicism and uh, there's a lot of people misinterpret being stoic as an attitude that you can't control anything. Uh, the attitude that, oh, well, life, it's going to, I'm just got to sit here and life well, the, is going to happen well, and it might be good. Well, and that's really not what, as you point out, that's not yeah. what stoicism it's is. Not, right. It's not being indifferent. Yeah, right. correct. Or stoic and not having an expression or right. just kind of flatlining right. through life. No, yeah. it's just accepting that people are going to do what they're going to do and right. you react and, you know, that that's the only thing is your decisions and your thoughts. You do yeah. control your thoughts. One of the many things I appreciate about you, Bill, is that, uh, first of all, you have, uh, what, uh, 15 principles. Uh, you're not, you're not limited to like 10 commandments. So you've expanded, uh, they're, they're helpful your, your too, view of the world. And also <laughs> every one of, it seems that every time we take a look at one of your practices a little bit deeper, we find that, uh, what you've really done is you, you picked the, uh, the cream of the crop, other things that people have uh, uh, before you, uh, whether it be Aristotle or, or, you know, any one of those kind of dudes, uh, Freud. <laughs> but uh, Yogi Berra uh, said it's tough to predict, it's tough to make predictions, especially about the future. And uh, that's <laughs> like, that's like, go. if that's not staying in the present, I don't know what is. There you go. So, it's hard to beat Yogi. So if, 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 if we want to stay in the present, and I like presence, uh, where can people uh, follow uh, your, uh, your philosophies and perhaps um, uh, find something to keep them warm uh, on a cold winter's night? Uh, or, oh, you know, something, oh. something, something cool, too, as the weather's getting warmer and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, Embrace the Boom. I've got an Embrace the Boom uh, website, Bill Jordan, embrace the boom.com. And you'll find links to my YouTube videos. I've also got a YouTube channel entitled of all things, imagine embrace the boom, but this mug is pretty handy dandy. It's 15 ounces and you put whatever you want to hot, cold, whatever you can. I've got a friend from high school. She uses it for makeup brushes, whatever, but she likes the concept of embrace the boom. The idea of which is to live your life and forget your age and embrace the boom and don't settle into what society tells you you should or should not be because of a certain age you are. Simple as that. Well, on Amen. that note, <laughs> I'll bring and, it again. <laughs> and, and stay in the present. That's it. Stay in the present. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.